Well, welcome everybody. Um, this is a kickoff session for a new um, special interest group under the OpenShift Commons umbrella for image builders. Um, and thanks for coming. Um, we are going to try something a little bit different today. Uh, we're going to have uh, Ryan lead a discussion on image building um, and how to make redistributable OpenShift ready images, which I think is a topic that everybody's asked me at least 100 questions about um, on forums and in IRC and on Slack and in other places at conferences. So I, I know this is of interest to a lot of people, especially people who have services or frameworks that they want to make sure are available um, and ready to use on OpenShift online, on OpenShift dedicated or in their own enterprises. So um, I think the the goal here is to figure out um, how to have that conversation um, and get some information out the door and then and expose what we are considering now as best practices, but also to get um, all of the folks that are interested in this topic to help contribute to those best practices and to give us feedback um, with folks that are working on OpenShift Origin, the project, to make sure that um, our documentation and everything else is up to snuff. That doesn't mean that we're going to do all the writing on these things. This means that maybe um, some of you can, can help us find the flaws in the documentation and create better best practices documentation for image builders. Um, and this is really a new world order with Kubernetes and containers and all kinds of other things. So there's lots to learn about um, packaging up your, your services and frameworks and um, programs so that they work in OpenShift um, and on any cloud. So um, I'm going to unmute everybody. That's going to be the interesting thing today. I'm going to try and keep people unmuted. But what I'd like to do is have Ryan kick off um, the, the call today and um, give us a little bit of a background because he's been working on getting Node.js images ready and doing a lot of um, OpenShift evangelism and hearing um, about some of the processes and, and using the processes to build those images. So Ryan, why don't you introduce yourself or maybe just go to the, the first slide because I know I put a purpose slide in there too. Um, I may have mentioned this, but it's really about um, discussing and developing and disseminating um, the documentation, the best practices for building and maintaining those um, images on OpenShift and Kubernetes. So. There's some distinctions between just doing that, but I'm going to let Adam, Adam, I saw Adam's name pop up there, so I said that. Um, I'm going to let Ryan take it away and um, walk through the agenda that he's got set up for us today. Cool. Thanks, Diane. Um, hi, I'm, well, it looks like uh, we already covered a quick uh, welcome here. Um, here's a, a overview of some uh, topics I'm going to touch on today in, in our kickoff meeting. We'll talk about some of our existing documentation for best practices around image generation. Uh, we'll talk very briefly about source to image and um, how you can use source to image to help enforce standards in your uh, IT organization or across your uh, environments, Kubernetes environments. Um, We'll also talk about uh, using these tools to uh, standardize your images uh, by producing your own builder images. So we'll talk about what builder images are and how those can be used in coordination with source to image to produce uh, application containers uh, that should be super useful. Um, and lastly, I'll go into a couple demos on what I've been doing with these uh, set of tools in order to produce my own builder images specifically targeted for uh, Node.js developers. So I'll start off with a, a quick look. I can't see the uh, chats, so I'm going to have to refer to uh, Diane to, to manage some of the uh, chats here. And um, feel free to speak up if you have any direct questions about anything. Um, and hopefully we'll have a conversation as I flip through these. So the first one I wanted to, to show here is uh, some of our um, Project Atomic guidelines. Uh, so we'll open this up in a new window. We'll take a quick look at what's available currently on the Project Atomic site. 
Um, there's a lot of good tips here if you're just getting started with building images. Um, a lot of great uh, pieces of advice that you'll want to use. Um, one thing that we're going to, and these are really kind of some of the expectations that OpenShift is going to have um, in order to manage your container images uh, appropriately. Um, so uh, one of the pieces of advice here is knowing the difference between command and entry point. We've got some uh, advice on how to set up uh, those particular entries in your in your Docker file uh, if you're currently working on Docker files. Um, we have some advice on uh, using exec uh, in order to make sure that your failure gets reported back out uh, to the uh, container management services. Um, we do expect you to use the expose statement in your Docker file to uh, and. One way we use that information is uh, OpenShift will look for this uh, line in your Docker image and uh, try to map uh, your our load balancer to the particular port that you have identified via the expose statement. So this can give us information on um, which port your container is hoping to use. Um, there's a lot of great tips in here. Um, I really just wanted to get you get your uh, wet your appetite here with uh, some of that information from the project atomic guidelines it's a great resource um, and I want to outline what's working well for us so far before I jump into new topics um, there's also the openshift guidelines uh, I'll open this up really quickly this is from docs.openshift.org there's a link there in the slides if you'd like to click through on your own um, this has a lot of additional usage information that kind of goes uh, beyond what is listed in the Project Atomic docs. Slightly more OpenShift specific information here, um, but also very good information if you want to build applications and services that are going to be portable across a maximum number of uh, Docker or Kubernetes based environments. There's some also uh, some good information in here about um, security and what we do in order to um, help lock down these containerized environments. One thing that I wanted to point out specifically is support for arbitrary user IDs in the container. Um, and hopefully I'll cover that in our example demo section uh, later. Any questions so far? One thing I'd like to point out is that most of this content is really designed for operators, administrators, um, generally people who have root access. If you are um, handing people Docker files to work with, uh, you're basically handing out the expectation that they will have root access during the life cycle of, of your build. Um, so, one thing that the OpenShift crew has been doing to help lock down these environments um, and make sure that only root users get root access, even during a build lifecycle, um, and it also a way to codify these requirements and ensure that they're consistently applied is uh, using a tool like source to image um, So source to image helps combine uh, your application sources with an operationally maintained base or builder image um, in order to produce an application container image. Um, this source to image effort is available as a standalone project. Uh, you could find it here at uh, github.com slash openshift slash source to image. Um, and there's a variety of information on using the S2I command line tool to run a build using some source code from GitHub for this example, and a image that this example shows is pulling an image from Docker Hub. And then it'll produce a Docker image locally with the following uh, label or tag. So that's how source to image in general can work. If you'd like to try it out on your own, there are downloads here on the releases page. Uh, so you can grab a copy of the source to image tool um, and use that within your Jenkins environment. If you already have an ex external build process, 
that's fine. Um, you could take advantage of these technologies uh, in your existing build systems as well as in OpenShift. It is supported right out of the box on OpenShift though. And we'll see an example of that on the uh, demo section. So uh, how would you, how would one go about um, building your own builder images and helping um, standardize your runtime environments? Well, we've got a, a nice uh, doc specifically around advice for building builder images. Uh, so this goes a step further than our more general guidelines that I showed earlier um, in order to talk about uh, really specifically what the benefits are with source to image. One of the uh, benefits, prescribed benefits here, is the ability to use, um, to cache build artifacts um, and recycle them, save them in subsequent builds. Um, so that's one particular feature. Another feature, my top, top selling feature for me here with source to image is having a workflow that has extracted all of the um, operational tasks that require root and has accomplished all those in the builder image primarily where uh, uh, is an image that your ops team is going to maintain um, all the operational work doing your yum install or app get install has already been done in advance. And so by the time a average developer comes along to take advantage of the builder image, uh, they'll be hooking off of a assemble statement, um, which is where the build actually happens, and a run statement, which is where the uh, runtime environment is uh, booted into. So these are the two main fields that develop uh, operations teams would tune in order to um, customize the build and run uh, workflows for developers. Uh, and we'll see a little bit of that later as well. Any questions about uh, the different pieces that I've brought up, the builder images, uh, the differences between that and a standard image? I asked in the chat um, room, Ryan, how many of the folks who are on the and you can answer in the chat too. How many people have used STI before? And if you could just let us know, because I'm, I'm curious a little bit, you know, how well known the SQL, STI stuff is. Yeah, yeah. If for most people, if you have run a build in OpenShift, you have pro whether you know it or not, you've used S2I um, as part of that build process. Uh, so we'll see an example of what that looks like uh, in the next section. And if you're interested in creating your own builder images, um, we have a blog post on that topic. Uh, this is what you can expect out of that blog, how to create your own source to image builders, um, and some of the selling points of why you might go with that approach. Um, this particular example uh, expects the source code to just be uh, static files that will be served up by light HTTPD. Um, so it's a very simple kind of static uh, web server, I believe. Uh, I, I think it's static files, um, but really basic light HTTPD example um, here in this post. Uh, if you want more examples, feel free to take a look at my source code or um, the upstream, the, the primary code that I forked off of. So my particular image standardization use case that I wanted to uh, establish a workflow for Node.js developers, uh, enabling them to use new versions of Node.js that aren't currently supported under uh, Red Hat's software collection libraries. Um, so this would be uh, an effort to extend um, a, another base image that's offered by the OpenShift team. Um, there's an image on Docker Hub called OpenShift Base CentOS 7. And this image is actually what all of the OpenShift builder images are actually extensions to this image. Um, so this is available on Docker Hub. There's not a lot of information here. But if you click through to the GitHub repository information, 
for this particular image, you can see that this is used as a dependency for the Ruby source to image builder, the uh, main Node.js source to image builder, Python, Perl, PHP are all uh, sharing from this standard base image. Um, and there's kind of a debate on whether we should all be repurposing a shared Docker file or whether we should be extending a pre-built image on Docker Hub. Uh, for now, all of these projects are extending a pre-built image stored on Docker Hub, at least for the CentOS uh, builder images. All right, so uh, I'm gonna pause you for a second. There's a, an interesting conversation going on in the, um, in the chat, so pop over there, Ryan, and um, yeah. take a look at it. Um, so a, a cup the, the the Microsoft savvy guys have been using STI for ASP.NET stuff, so um, I'm sure we'll get them on sometime to talk about all that. But there's some some things I think um, that are interesting here. Not not a lot of people have been using this, and they, some are saying that they had better success building with a generic Docker image. So I think the demo part that you're about to do is going to be quite interesting. Um, there, yeah, yeah, I I would agree that um, our source to image technology is not what people might, ex not exactly what people might expect coming from the broader Docker ecosystem. Um, it is really meant to be a standalone tool where you're kind of building your own builder um, using the technology. So, so I think the the core technology that they're probably looking at may be a little bit strange, but that's not what's meant to be offered to developers. Um, they're supposed to build something using that technology and offer that to the developer. So hopefully what I've built um, has a clear enough value proposition to uh, outline that use case. And hopefully I make it easy enough to understand of, of how I've gone about building it in the first place. Um, yeah, we should have a .NET um builder image as well for sure that that would be really cool um so what i've done in my work is i've attempted to maintain um all of the established conventions from our official scl based image for node.js which is available here on github um openshift uh s2i node.js um is the main code uh that i forked from this is currently providing Node.js 0 0.10 uh, via Red Hat Software Collection libraries. Uh, so my fork here is very similar. It uh, builds in the same way. It runs its test cases in the same way. So at some point I could uh, perhaps hand this off to the OpenShift team if they were interested in maintaining it or running the builds. Uh, it should be very easy to plug into a distributed build system. Um, so I'll get to the demos here and we'll try to see uh, what exactly is, is all this information about how would we run a build um, and let's, let's look at a, a success case here. So I'm going to fire up a new terminal and I'm going to try to use the S2I command to run a build locally here. Here it's downloading my source code. Uh, here it's actually running the build and we could see the build uh, output going into the terminal here. Um, this is if I was running this manually and we should have, if I look at Docker images, uh, it's like here we've got a new Pillar.js image that has been built. So pretty easy to run a build independently. That could have been um, initiated from Jenkins or, or some other system. Um, let's see how this same thing might look in OpenShift. Um, so I'll use the OC new app command. Let me actually, uh, I'll need to really quickly log in to my um, local OpenShift virtual machine. I booted up this morning. Log into this environment and I'll create a new project. And I'll also want to log in from the command line. Should be logged in here with our 
OpenShift all-in-one virtual machine. If you want to try this out uh, on your own, I have a link here. You could go to openshift.org slash VM, and we have the same virtual machine environment that I'm using. Also, the OC command line tool that I'll be using is also available from the releases page on uh, OpenShift Origin on GitHub. Uh, so here is the OC new app command that will take my builder image uh, that I've provided and a repo, and this will schedule a build and a deployment in OpenShift. So I can copy this example into my terminal, and I haven't actually uploaded this particular image. I've uploaded this particular image to Docker Hub, but not to my individual OpenShift environment. So you could see, hopefully, how easy it is to use these images. I'm actually going to build using the uh, current tag that I've labeled on this Node.js image. I labeled uh, several Node.js releases all onto the same image. So we'll be using the Node v6 release by selecting the current tag here. So this should schedule the build and deployment. You can see it's creating some resources in my virtual machine. Uh, let's go see what that looked like from the web console. Looks like here's the new service has been scheduled. We've got our build running. This should be really similar to what we saw from the command line. Looks like the first step is downloading the Docker image from Docker Hub. Not sure exactly how long this will take to download, but we should see the build automatically stream, uh, the build logs automatically stream into the web console. Looks like here it's downloading the application sources, and we could follow the logs here, tail the logs to watch it stream into the uh, web console. Once this build is completed, the resulting Docker image will be automatically uploaded into our integrated Docker registry as a new application container image. And once that image upload is complete, we'll automatically trigger a new deployment for this image. So we should see uh, as soon as that upload into our internal Docker registry finishes, a new deploy uh, should kick off right here. So that's a pretty clean workflow uh, from the command line for enabling developers to test out my new source to image build without having to uh, bother their administrator and ask permission to get a uh, particular base image installed. Um, so this is more of a community use case um, showing portability primarily. We'll check back in on this uh, in a minute. Uh, let's see. What else I have for the demos? Did the new app demo. So uh, you can actually help make these even easier to, uh, these base images, you can make them even easier to distribute um, by packaging them up as a template. Um, so I have one of these templates available inside my um, GitHub repo. And there's some additional instructions on how to install this into your project. So I could run this OC create command in order to install the builder images into my existing project. Uh, it looks like I already have an uh, image stream that was uh, automatically imported when I ran the OC new app command. Uh, so I have a case for that in the documentation here. If you've automatically imported this command using OC new app, you may need to clean out that existing image stream before. Okay, so that removed my old image stream that only had the current tag and has now re-imported the image stream with all of the labeled tags and uh, Node.js releases that I've listed on Docker Hub. So here's the, uh, the amount of Node.js runtimes that I am making available to developers. So they could select from Node v6 uh, or the current tag, which is an alias. Um, they can select uh, the latest LTS release. 
for a node 0 0.10 or 0 0.12 release for their application. Uh, let's check back in on the web console and see how we've done. So this first build has completed. I can go in and inspect this uh, container that we have running. We could see the logs uh, after it booted up. See the report. It looks like it reported we're at node version 6 here in the logs. And if I run in the terminal, I can also see we are we have node version 6 available. Another really interesting feature that we touched on earlier was the um, security aspects of these containers. Um, if I check uh, ID dash U, looks like I'm running as user ID 1001. This is usually, huh, I may have a bug in my code. Usually I get a random user ID back when I run this uh, command. So this, this demo right here was supposed to show a much longer user ID. I'll have to check back in on that feature, but this should be uh, part of the security precautions is we automatically drop uh, uh, drop your privileges as soon as possible before the build even happens, ideally. So uh, I've installed this image locally. Did you have a question, Diane? No, I'm just uh, getting some text as on where the .NET um, st stuff is, the .NET images are. Um, and one person is asking, um, does S2I work without OpenShift? And the answer is yes. Yeah, and I had a slide on that earlier. You can grab source to image um, directly off of GitHub and run it independently. And it, it, the resulting image is a Docker image, as I showed earlier. Um, here was my uh, most recent image, and I could do a Docker run uh, IT with this, uh, it needs, oh, no, it needs a port number. Let's see if this gets us our local host 8080. Here's our application just running off of a straight Docker run command. So yeah, you, you, sh you don't have to use this technology with OpenShift, um, but I think it's great to have it prepackaged and ready to go right within OpenShift. So the last example I showed um, from the slides here was how to install this set of image streams or um, image source to image builders and make it available to developers. So uh, you saw how I could load this application from the command line. Let's do the same thing from the web now that I've installed the templates. So I'll click on add to template here. And if I search for Node.js, you could see that I have the, let's, let's show all here. Looks like I have the standard somewhere in here, the standard Node.js images provided by OpenShift and I have my additional builder images that I've provided on my own. So there's a LTS tag, there's a latest, uh, there's node 6, um, node 5.10, 5.11. There's a ton of different releases available here. And instead, uh, since I've already demoed the node v6, let's check out the LTS release. I'll go to uh, node LTS, um, I'll call this application or this service dub dub dub, and I'll pick the um, default source code. I also, uh, you can define your own default source code uh, as part of the source to image base. I'll click on continue. It looks like our new build is now scheduled and running. I can view that build. Since we've already downloaded most of the base layers, um, the image pull should be much shorter since it'll be able to recycle all the base layers that were provided by um, the CentOS 7 base provided by the OpenShift team 
and all the layers that are in common with the other tagged release of OpenShift that we've already downloaded. So this is only going to be downloading the differences between the uh, current release and the LTS release of Node.js, which should have been saved as a separate layer on Docker Hub. When this build finishes, we should see a deploy kickoff here, just like we had with our command line usage case. And from then, you can go ahead and scale it on up. Um, by then, it's it's a fully built and deployed image available um, within Kubernetes. I could also, as an administrator, push an update um, to the base image, and that will cause any application containers that have been based on the updated builder to automatically be rebuilt in order to pick up the patches to the base OS. So my workflow here as an administrator, if I need to make sure that Heartbleed or Shellshock or whatever the latest exploit uh, that hits the news, uh, if I want to ensure that it's been closed, throughout my entire um, IT organization, I can push updated builder images and any application instances that are that have been built on top of that builder will automatically get rebuilt in OpenShift. And that's kind of the beauty of this whole layered build approach. Yeah. Any other questions about um, installing these templates, making these? This is really, I think, um, an important point to note that you want these things to be uh, any images that you build to be very easy for administrators to pull down into their OpenShift environment and provide to their developers. So here's a mechanism that, that I've added in my particular um, example repo, uh, I would highly recommend that you add something similar to any sourced image build that you that you establish. So if you want to look at uh, what that source looks like, I actually have two of them here. I have one for my main releases, and I have a separate set of images on Docker Hub for release candidates. Um, or preview releases. So I usually push here first, and once I'm happy with the results, I push out to the uh, primary image stream. Here's what the sources look like for um, importing these images into an OpenShift environment. And you could see I have a, a tag um, for this level of detail, and here's the Docker image with the release tag that I'm pulling down. for questions, pause for questions here. So yes, uh, Adam, we do want you to package this up for Fedora. And another thing that would be really interesting uh, for Fedora, uh, I would love to see if uh, OpenShift, this is what all of my applications is are all inheriting from source to image base. This is what all the Ruby, Node.js, Python, Perl, and PHP applications are based on. And this base image is uh, can generate um, OSs built for CentOS or built for RHEL. It would be really cool to see Fedora added to this mix as well. So then I can really quickly rebuild my application source and, and make a source to image Fedora available or a source to image Python by picking up a different um, source to image base. Cool. So um, I have a question for a uh, section for questions coming up next, but here's my call to action. Um, you you all are uh, can help us out um, by helping promote best practices for image production and distribution for um, by helping standardize workflows for dev teams and operations teams. Um, you can help improve container security, and most importantly, you can help grow the container ecosystem by packaging up your solutions and making them uh, easy to share. 
so, any questions? Not, this is not, kind of the end of my demo. Not just questions. I think what I, everybody is on has themselves on mute, and I, I want to change that. Um, if you can go in and unmute yourself, um, I'm going to unmute all, so you have no excuses not to talk. Um, I'm, I'm curious that, that we've got a lot of the .NET folks on here from Click to, to, click to Cloud, um, and you, you talked about you know working with the Fedora folks, but what would it take to get the the .NET image incorporated into to um, this flow? They they seem to have a a working viable base image. Where would we find you know if we could find that if they posted it in the chat and if one of the click to close cloud I'm, guys would like to un. It probably depends on how that uh, stack is built. Um, if they're building from a Docker file, that's definitely what I'm doing and what uh, what this source to image project is also doing. Um, but do you want to expose that Docker file directly to developers is, is a kind of a maintenance and security question that you're gonna have to ask yourselves at some point. Um, Docker files are a great way to get people with root access involved, but I'm not sure it's the best way to onboard developers, unless you expect all of your developers to have root access for your build lifecycle. So we have Docker files in this repo. You can see how we build our base layers for CentOS and uh, RHEL. And if you wanted to see uh, how we extend those base layers for Node.js, here's the official process for extending those base layers for the CentOS image and the RHEL image. Um, what we do in this case is we actually do a yum install of the uh, SCL release and then install um, the Node.js 10 package. Um, pretty minimal um, for as far as package installation goes because most of the work has already been done um, here in the base CentOS build. Uh, if you want to look at the differences for my repo, I actually pulled down um, some files directly from Docker Hub. Here's the differences for my Docker file. Um, I actually set a bunch of credentials, interact with a GPG key server, and I do a curl of the Node.js binaries from nodejs.org in order to get the latest uh, binaries that are not available in um, in Red Hat's uh, software collection libraries. So definitely Docker files are the right way to go, assuming it's a build context that <coughs> requires root permission. Um, once you have a build that already encapsulates your base OS and your .NET runtime, then you should be dropping privileges uh, as so, um, and handing off to a developer workflow. All right. So I think that one of the Click to Cloud guys has finally unmuted himself. So can you tell us a little bit about the process that you went through to get your image? Hi, Diane. Um, I, I don't think I'm the best person to answer these questions. Um, I, we have Madan here. He can, uh, he can guide you through the whole process. But uh, one thing I can definitely say that we are using a source to image and we are making a templates, um, not only with those bare .NET base images, but also uh, with some other functionalities like database for ODB and, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and there was a very nice question about the security. I would like uh, Madan is here he, uh, to answer this. Uh, unmute himself. He unmuted for a second. Here we come. Madan? Yeah, Dan. This post to build image is developed by using the base image. We are using the Docker file concept for building the image. There are various layer, layers, layers involved in building the image. And uh, the details are provided on our website. Can you post the link in um, in the chat room there? Yeah, surely I'll ask Kapil. Just send the uh, link. Perfect. 
so it sounds like like Horatio also, um, who's I think he's going to go to telecom, who's on the on the call as well, had, had mentioned that he's using Docker files um, at their their in their process to do it too. So it sounds like everybody's on the the right track here. There we go. There's the dot net file. So I think we're we're getting we're getting people into the right track. I just think that we didn't have a lot of people who were aware outside of the Click to Cloud folks who, who are, um, I think, Red Hat partners as well, um, very aware of S S2I. So I think this is a good base jumping off point um, to, keep, to get people into the process. And, and really, source to image is primarily about building a single image and enabling developers who have source code that they want to layer on top of an image. Um, if you were building an image uh, that was a database image, you might not use a source to image to, to assemble that. Um, but this type of strategy allows you to drop permissions as quickly as possible. Um, so the application build is not run in a root context. Um, so I think this is a big security upgrade potentially. Um, but it all depends. Uh, it, it's definitely focusing on a very particular use case. And I think we'll have additional meetings and discussions that talk about how to get multiple images orchestrated together, um, standards for uh, templating these images, um, and sharing multi-service, uh, multi-image solutions uh, using these template files. So I think that'll all come in later meetings and further discussions. Um, but this is just one way of helping provide standardization throughout your IT organization by uh, building better operations tools that enable your developers. Yeah. In the next session that we were gonna, um, topic that we we're gonna try and cover um, was the enterprise workflow for from uh, Banco Santana's Protobon IT group we were going to talk about how they're, they're using their CI CD workflow to do, build images um, for production. So I think that that will give us just yet another use case. This, this one really focused on the developer side of things. I'm wondering um, if other people have, there you go. There's, and there's the, the .NET one. I'm wondering if the click to cloud guys um, would talk maybe in, I'm, I'm thinking a cadence of every two weeks for the um, the SIG group meetings to talk about this subject. Are there other subjects um, that people would like to hear about? <clears throat> if so, type them into the chat and then we'll try and incorporate them um, or type them into the mailing list. If you have questions about um, what we're discussing today or feedback on the documentation, because I think that was like Adam and a few other folks on the call in the chat room in the early on in the conversation, um, it sounded like the documentation that we have for this process is missing something. And I'm, I'm curious what people, um, what people are thinking that it's missing. Um, or if, if now that you've seen this demo, um, where someone's like, I'd, I'd really like to see docs that don't involve OpenShift. So like, if you unmute yourself. Um, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Explain what you mean um, by that. So I know that when I learned OpenShift and, and Docker and whatnot, I started really, really simple with just a local Docker server running and building images. And then I kind of graduated up to OpenShift because even though OpenShift has got all this great stuff, um, it does require a lot of knowledge to really know what's going on. I mean, even this presentation talking about image streams and, and builds and, you know, it, it, it's a lot to understand just to get started with one part of the technology. Um, and so I think it would be really helpful if there was some kind of tutorial that said, okay, you want to build a, a source to us. So like the example I've got is I've got a Docker image for um, a Maven built Java application that runs on Tomcat. Um, I think S2I is the right way to go, but it's been difficult for me to kind of get into it because um, 
I would really like to start with, okay, how do I generate just a generic Docker file out of this? And, and how do I build this inside of Docker even before I get to OpenShift? And then I can start layering on the additional terminology and stuff like that. So um, I'm rambling, but yeah, that, that was kind of what I was thinking with that. So um, I'm trying to think that that's actually not a bad way of uh, presenting the information is to do it once for your application, um, just to create uh, a Docker file the generic way, and then do it again with the STI way, outlining the the different terminologies like image streams and templates and the things that that we love about using OpenShift and Kubernetes and all that. Um, it's probably a not that's probably a good blog post somewhere or something in the, the doc center. To, yeah, I, I was going to suggest maybe having two documents in the in the or I'm sorry, yeah, basically two documents in the docs. One that's a a simple getting started with directly the S two I command line that addresses how to do this workflow, very simple, very standalone, and then a separate document how to integrate this workflow into OpenShift. Yeah, yeah I think that's a great idea. I think that would be good, and, and I know we're we're doing a lot of rewrites on the doc center as it is, so I'll make sure that gets back. Um, and Ryan just posted his simple no OpenShift STI um, gist for those of you who'd like to, to take a look at it in the chat room. Um, yeah. So beyond that, um, I know like with Open Unison, Mark, that's your, your, your baby there um, at Tremolo. If you were gonna go and try and containerize that offering um, what else do you need to help with in order to get that um, ready to run a, with OpenShift? Well, so like the way that, so, ugh, sorry, I'm a little discombobulated today. Um, so like the way that we did um, the Open Unison deployment, so Open Unison, it's just a J2EE war file, um, you know, once it's built, but there are customization points in there, JSP pages, configuration files, key stores, um, uh, 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 images, stuff like that. So ideally, if I, when I deploy Open Unison without containers, I tell people to start with a Maven file that goes with an overlay and then add your extra stuff into that so that way you get all the binaries it produces the war file and then you drop it into tomcat or jboss or whatnot um when i created the docker image for open unison what i ended up doing was because i didn't have a good way to do that and i think s2i is the right way to do it um was i ended up creating a a base image and really all the base image was was kind of a, a little bit of a customized version of Tomcat to make it easier to deploy the ending up war file in it. Um, so ideally what I'd like to be able to do, and, and I'm thinking back to the, what little I did with the old OpenShift V2 stuff, is say, okay, create your Git repo. Your Git repo will have um, a, a, a Maven project file in it, a palm.xml, and all of your customizations, and then you're gonna run a command that will um, if you're not running OpenShift, uh, you're going to run a command that will go ahead and generate a Docker image file that you can push into your repository. Uh, or if you're running OpenShift, um, you know, instead of going through that, say, okay, here's the link, here's the URL to my uh, uh, Docker, or I'm sorry, my Git repo. Um, just pull it in and do your builds. Um, so that's kind of what I'm what I'd like it to be, at least in my head. I don't know if I'm just completely off base. Um, no, I think that that sounds like the right way to, to do things. And, I, and I, the reason I ask is because there are many com more complex use cases than what we saw today. And, that, and that's what I'm trying to tease out in this conversation in the image builder SIG is to get people to, to share their processes and get, get people like you to, to try it. Um, do some of that work on the side and then come back and show us where the holes are like in the documentation um, and and help um, feed the best practices um, and so we can get better and and get better redistributable images 
available um, for people to use with OpenShift. And um, that's sort of one of my, my goals for this group. Um, the other thing is, and, and I know um, Adam is on it, and he's building base images for Fedora. So I think at some point it might be interesting for people to find out, you know, how that process happens and um, definitely want to make sure that the, the Click to Cloud guys get on and, and talk about how to, you know, work with their images and where to find them. So that, that'll be something that we can take up in a, a future, um, future, future uh, event, hopefully. I think we have that we scheduled for an OpenShift Commons briefing sometime not too distant. If not, we will get that out there as well. Are there other topics that people um, would like to hear from, other, other resources that I should pull in from the, the open source project or Red Hat Engineering? Uh, that we can help you um, to get get started and build more of these images and give us more feedback. If not, um, or if you're just too shy to say anything, um, post it on the mailing the the SIG mailing list. Um, and I, I'll post the links to this um, and the and the recording of today's um, session. Um, on uh, the mailing list and on the, um, the image builder SIG landing page for um, op on OpenShift.commons. So please um, share share this widely. We'd love to get um, more feedback from folks. And we will do on May 18th. We'll meet again, and we're going to get um, some insights on another use case, the enterprise use case um, for. Oh, that Cordoban is using for Banco Santana's in their multi-regional um, deployment of OpenShift, um, which is running on AWS, for those of you who are curious. So it's uh, it, it's going to be, a, I think, a lot of information to digest. Mark, um, I'll probably tap you to try and, and build those images um, for Open Unison, um, and then come back and tell us what you found out as well. So without further ado, if there's no other questions, I'm going to end this SIG um, kickoff meeting and thank you all for coming.